What's up YouTube? Today we are going to be doing some more numerical methods analysis and we're going to be looking at the LU decomposition of a, a given matrix, a square matrix. So keep that in mind, it's always going to be square when using uh, the LU decomposition. So basically what is LU decomposition? If we're given a matrix A, we want to say, okay, let's split it up into the product of two matrices. L being the lower lower matrix and U being the upper matrix. So what does that what does that even mean? Okay, so we look at the L. The lower triangular matrix, one interesting characteristic is that all the diagonals are equal to one. The diagonal components and the upper components are all zeros. Right, so then the lower triangular portion is our matrix values, right? So now what is a upper triangular matrix? It's literally just the opposite except for our diagonals are not equal to one. They were our actual values as well. Okay, so these are the breakdown of our lower triangular matrix and our upper triangular matrix. And now the product of these two matrices has to equal our original given matrix A. And the given matrix A is up here. We have 1, 5, 0, 0, 2, 12, 5, 0, 0, 4, 13, 5, 0, 0, 6, 11. So this was actually a example, a question from a past midterm. Um, so it's kind of tricky but it's actually easy if you understand uh, the process. So when we're solving for the upper and lower triangular matrices we want to start out by just labeling our our uh, lower triangular matrix and then our upper triangular matrix is what we're going to be using to solve for each individual component of our lower triangular matrix. So we're given the matrix A. Okay, so how to start these problems? First things first, you want to look at your given matrix A, and what you want to do, you want to reduce using row operators, row operations, and reduce it to um, the form of an upper triangular matrix. Okay, and that's how we solve the upper triangular matrix and I'll show you how to now then solve in for each component of the lower triangular matrix. You can use, do them together. So looking at our first component that we want to eliminate, we have this 2 here, right? So we want to eliminate this 2 using row operators. So how will we do that? We would row 2 and we would add minus 2 times row 1, right? Because we have a one in this component and then to eliminate this component we just add two times the negative two times the one and that'll give us a zero right so this gives us top row remains unchanged and now we have a zero and twelve plus negative ten gives us two five zero and the other rows remain unchanged. So now we we had a row operator, this row operation here, right? And now we can now start filling in our uh, lower triangular matrix by looking at our factor. Our factor was negative two, right? The negative two times row one canceled out our component in the first column of the second row. So then we need to just put in so since we cancelled out the first column second row we can we take the factor that we used to cancel out that value and we put it in the same slot that we just got a zero so the opposite of negative two is positive two so we put the positive two in the same slot that we use the same this factor to cancel out that value. And we do that for each value 
in our uh, original matrix and plug in the opposite sign of that same factor. So let's do that again. Okay, so now we're looking at this four. We, we wanna cancel out this four, right? So how would we do that? Looking at our new matrix, we have the four and we can see that it's two times the second column in our second row. So that's easy. So we take R3, add negative two times R2. First row remains unchanged. Second row remains unchanged. And now the third row, four plus negative two times two is zero. 13 plus negative five times two is three. Five is zero, and the third row remains unchanged. Okay, so then same thing that we did on the last factor. This is a coincidence, but the factor is also negative two adding to this slot. So the second column, third row. So we go to the second column, third row, and we put in that same factor, but opposite signs. So then we have a two again. So keep in mind that these don't always have to be the same, just in this particular example. example um, they both happen to be negative two for the factors. Um, this is likely because this uh, is, a, an, is an exam question and that was kind of used to save time. Um, I guess it would just be an easier marking scheme for uh, for the teacher. But in this case, these twos are the same, but they don't always have to be the same. It's just this particular example that it's a coincidence. Okay, so now looking at our new matrix, we want to get rid of this guy. Similarly, we just add minus two times that row. So if R four plus again minus two times r three and that will cancel out that six so let's write out this new new matrix so after using performing that uh, matrix operator we get one five and these remain unchanged oops this should be a five wrote down to zero by accident so zero, zero, and then six, minus two times negative three is zero. And then we have 11 plus negative two times five equals one. Okay, so now looking back at our lower triangular matrix, we've got another factor of two, okay? So we had our minus two times our three, which is our factor for canceling out the fourth row, third column. So then we look here at our lower triangular matrix and that same slot, fourth row, third column, we put in the same factor opposite sign, okay? So then we have two, two, and two. Those are all of our factors, which is two, two, and two. So that's how you fill in your lower triangular matrix. And in this case, the rest of our matrix is zero. So there's gonna be no factor for those. But if there was a value there, we would just perform the exact same type of uh, matrix operator to cancel out and get zeros for those uh, components and then put the opposite sign of that factor in our lower triangular matrix. So we found our lower triangular matrix and then also this actually equals our upper triangular matrix, because if you notice, we have a zero, 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 and a zero, and another zero. So then this actually is the exact same as our form for our upper triangular matrix, right? We have our, all of our zeros, and then our values all in the upper triangular of, um, of our matrix. So now we've actually solved for the lower triangular matrix and the upper triangular matrix, so let's just write this out. So our lower triangular matrix was nothing more than, and our 
upper triangle matrix. Lower and upper. And then just to confirm, um, you can do this on your own. We can show that our matrix A, our original matrix A, if you want to perform the entire matrix multiplication of these uh, lower and upper matrix, you will actually get our original matrix that we uh, started with A. So perform this on your own, the matrix multiplication, and disprove yourself that um, this product of the lower and upper triangular matrix actually equals the original matrix that we started with. So this type of operation is really useful for solving for the inverse of a matrix. Um, I'll do that in a separate video. It would take too long um, to do in this video, but this basically is the really useful tool to use in MATLAB or any other operations. Um, it kind of simplifies the process, your inverse of a, of a matrix. So uh, thanks for watching. If you like my video, check out my website at everythingeng.com and like and subscribe to my videos. Thanks for watching.